वेलकम टू इपीजी पाठशाला दिस इज डॉक्टर मृन्मय प्रामाणिक आई टीच कम्पेटिव इंडियन लैंगुएज एंड लिटरेचर एट द यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कैलकाटा वी विल डिस्कस अ मॉड्यूल ऑन तोल का पीएम द मॉड्यूल इज प्रिपेयर बाय के पी निशा एंड इंडिपेंडेंट रिसर्चर इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस अबाउट द early grammar of tamil literature due to the elaborate explanations of a wide range of semantics discussed through the course of the next text the tolkapiam remains one of the most crucial textbooks in ancient indian literary history through the course of this module the intricate details of linguistics and other literary devices discussed in the tol kapiyam would be explained at length here tol kapiyam is considered to be one of the earliest known text from ancient india as a text that largely concerns itself with the descriptive linguistics of the tamil language tol kapiyam has remained available to scholars who are fluent in tamil translations of the text although attempted have been largely unsuccessful or incomplete tolkapiyam as a text can be roughly divided into three major sections the first two deals with the linguistic intricacies of the tamil language while the third section deals with ideas referred to in tamil literature each of these major sections has further been divided into nine chapters as 21st century scholars today we can understand that tolkapiyam deals with crucial factors pertaining to linguistics like morphology phonology orthography semantics and ideas vital to the composition of tamil literature the tolkapiyam was also the first text to classify the tamil language into two halves the sen tamil or classical tamil used in works of literature and kodu tamil or tamil dialect spoken by people of various regions of tamil nadu then the text further categorizes tamil alphabets into vowels and consonants followed by a thorough analysis of every alphabet compared to other indian languages tamil has fewer numbers of alphabets and to make it easier for the reader there is a section devoted to grammatic grammaticization associated with the use of certain words and syntaxes there has been an ongoing debate regarding when the tolkapiyam had originally been written though it is still in, uh, imprecise a large number of scholars believe uh, the believe the text has been written between the 5th century bc and the 3rd century ce while commenting on the debate dating tolkapiyam in his text indian literary criticism theory and interpretation literary critic ganesh devi has stated how as ilakkuvanar believed the text to be written somewhere between 6th century bc and 10th century bc at the same time devi states how indologist camel zevelville believes tolkapiyam to be a gradually growing body that took about 8 centuries to acquire its final shape zevelville's theory also states that the sections dealing with prosody and diction in tamil literature should belong to the 4th or 5th century uh, 4th and 5th century ad devi completes his argument by uh, stating how zevelville's theory of dating tolkapiyam seems most probable apart from the controversy regarding the dating of the text a complete understanding of the tolkapiyam is possible only by analyzing the historical literary era of which tolkapiyam remains an integral part this historical period is termed as the sangam period in ancient south india the period is believed to have spanned from 300 bc to 300 ce 
over 2,381 poems are believed to have been composed during this period of Tamil literature. Sangam literature itself can be categorized into two major topics. The first one is Akatiyam and the second is Tolkapiyam. The Tolkapiyam and Sangam literature. Renowned scholar A.K. Ramanujan wrote two books titled The Interior Landscape and Poems of Love and War on the Beautiful Poems from the Sangam period. Writing about these, he states, I quote, Tamil, one of the two classical languages, languages of India, is the only language of contemporary India which is recognizable, continuous with a classical past. These poems are classical, early, ancient. They are also classics, works that have stood the test of time, the founding works of a whole tradition. Not to know them is not to know a unique and major poetic achievement of Indian civilization in their antiquity, in their contemporaneity. There is not much else in any Indian literature equal to these quite and dramatic Tamil poems. In their values and stances, they present a mature classical poetry, passion in balanced by courtesy, transparency by ironies and nuances of design, impersonality by vivid detail and leanness of line by richness of implication. These poems are not just the earliest evidence of Tamil genius. The Tamils in their 2000 years of literary effort wrote nothing better. Ramanujan commented it in his prologue. The rich literary history of classical Tamil language is a fascinating one. Tamil is the earliest Dravidian language and is often considered to be one of the most um, creative of the regional literatures in India. Sangam poetry which existed in written form is considered to be the most important portion of works within Sangam literature. The core idea of Sangam poetry lies in the different types of literary works and the feelings transpired through them. The early stage of Tamil poetry is often referred to as the Sangam age after three legendary Sangams of academies of literary excellence that are said to have supervised works of the great legacies of the period is body of poetic works dated roughly between 1st and 4th centuries Christian era, devoted to the subject of love, akam, and the heroic themes of battle and the, uh, and, the, and the panegyric or puram. Thus, it is important to note that classical poetry from the Sangam period can be majorly divided into two types. The one is akam and the second is puram. According to Tamil tradition, there were three Sangams from mythological times. The first was its origin to Agathya or Agastha, who came from North India and stayed at Madurai, Tamil Nadu. This academy consisted of 549 members patronized by 89 Pandas and lasted for 4,440 years. Once Madurai was submerged in the sea, it led to the emergence of the second Sangam. Agastha established the second Sangam. The Sangam consisted of 3,700 poets patronized by 59 Paniyas and lasted for, lasted for 3,700 years. The last Sangam lasted for 1,850 years and was patronized by 49 Pantheas. The date of the last Sangam is the early centuries of the Christian era. This is probably the only historical validated Sangam located in Madurai on the banks of the river Vaigai. Sangam poetry concerns itself with four major goals, namely Aram or righteousness or virtue, the Porul or worldly success, Raidu or release, Imbam or pleasure. While the first three goals are conveyed through Puram poetry, the last one is best conveyed through Akam poetry. Akam. Now, let us talk about Akam poetry. 
Akam poetry usually deals with feelings of love and affection. They speak of family and relationships as the central themes through which the experiences of life are best developed. Akam deals with two kinds of love. One is mutual love and the second one is one-sided love. Sangam landscapes uh, into which each of these works of poetry is categorized has been classified into uh, thin eyes based on the mood of the poem, season and land type. Mutual love itself was reflected through a description of landscape by the poetry takes place. Poems on love are named based on the differentiation of the landscapes. They are situated in uh, Kurinchi, Natal, Palai, Mullai, Marutani, etc. No matter what kind, Akam poetry always showcases a conscious relationship between theme and genre. These poems deal with the relationship between man and woman and the various stages of love between them. Puram deals with works of heroism, war and ethics. Coming to the role of gender in these poems, the role of women are uh, practically negligible. However, a lot of importance is given to the chastity of women in these poems. These are several Akam poems where the woman, the heroine, uh, relates the depth of her love for the hero by revealing details about her chastity. Interior landscapes convey the feelings and emotions involved. These poems speak of how a feeling of possession is vital in love. In Akam poetry, there would always be a speaker and a listener. Poetry unfolds through a conversation which is almost like a dramatic monologue between two people. In case of one-sided love poems, underlying tension is an almost palpable feeling. The feelings of love and uh, desires being unfulfilled along with a possibility of separation are predominant in these poems. Akam speaks of the interior landscape of one's own heart and Puram speaks of the external. Sangam poetry is essentially court poetry of an age which often spoke of heroism. While Akam poetry deals with private emotions, Puram deals with public domains and public feelings. There are several examples of famous Akam poems that have been translated in English by A.K. Ramanujan. One such example has been illustrated below. The poem was originally composed by poet Urayur Mutukotra and written in Mullai Thinai, titled What She Said. My love has not come back. The jasmine has bloomed. A goat herd comes into town with goats and milk to take some rice to others waiting outside. Palmyra rain girls in their hands, hearts of young ones in their care, in his hair, nothing but birds of tiny jasmine. Tolkapiam demonstrates the use of these words and their relation to a particular thin eye, landscape or emotion. The use of syntax and choice of words have described at length through the course of the Tolkapiam, helping us deconstruct how ancient Tamil poetry and its subsequent followers followed a particular uh, thematic structure. Now let us talk about Puram poetry. Puram poems are always situated in public domains. These poems often speak of war, bloodshed, love for the one's own people and politics. These poems are classified according to the core idea transpired through the poem. Vedchi or cattle bread, Vanchi or preparation for war or invasion, Ulimnai or siege, Tumpai or battle and Vakai or victory, Kanchi or tragedy and instability of the world and Patan or elegy and praise. These poems often speak of betrayal, separation and tragedy with relation to war and politics. Puram poems often showcase love that ends in bloodshed, projectors of love and associating love with sacrifice displays how a certain kind of violence plays part in this kind of love. 
the hero's self rebellion when it comes to love has been a recurrent idea conveyed through these poems confluence of love and work together has been found in several puram poems from the sangam age now let us focus on main ideas transpired through sangam poetry in their antiquity and their contemporary outlook there is not much else in any indian literature that equals to the wit and dramatic akam poems in their values and stands these poems represent a mature represent a mature creativity passion is balanced to the use of dramatic poetic measures while impersonality by vivid details remains a classic feature of puram poems keeping this in mind there are some major ideas transpired through sangam poetry these are secularism different descriptions of private and public worlds where questions of personal emotions and desires hold importance greater good of the tamil community heroism metaphors and imagery use of realism through descriptions of mundane or daily activities the importance of karma or action over dharma or duty the emergence of a non sanskritic tradition irrespective of the fact that sangam poetry is a tradition as ancient as sanskrit literature focus on the use of dramatic dialogue where a certain degree of democratic language is involved emergence of social reality in instances where the woman in the poem speaks to the mother of the man impliciting a certain kind of social relationship between the two sangam poetry as a form of court poet where specific methods of writing poetry are employed through generic decision liking linking natural landscapes to feelings of love the existence of a certain amount of reality involved in poetic writing this was an important feature of sangam poetry tolkapiyam now let us focus on the text of it tolkapiyam derives its names from the confluence of two words tonmai or ancient and kapiyam or literature it is extensive work on the grammar of the tamil language and is the earliest extant work on tamil literature the text itself comprises of three books of atikarams that have been written in the form of short formulaic compositions or nurpas these three books are namely ejutthadikaram or deals with the formation of words and combination of words in tamil language soladikaram deals with syntax in tamil poruladikaram deals with the tools used to convey thoughts and emotions in tamil literature each of these three books has been further divided into uh, nine chapters each tolkapiyam formulated 30 phen- uh, 30 phonemes and three dependent sounds for the tamil language ejutthadikaram the first book of tolkapiyam deals with the formation of words and combination of words in tamil language this book has nine subsections that focus on the linguistic aspect of the tamil language in totality these nine subsections are first nul marabu focuses on tamil language itself and organizes them into consonants vowels and diacritic symbols second one is mozi marabu the second subsection focuses on a well defined classification of phonemes and elision these classifications are unambiguous and follow a thorough enlisting of linguistic measurements by focusing on the use of vowels and their consequent sounds third one is peer appeal the third subsection focuses completely on the use of articulatory phonetics in tamil followed by the explanation of visual representation of each alphabet The next one is puna real the fourth subsection speaks about words that have come into existence through the combination of two or more words in tamil next is thokai marabu the fifth subsection is often considered a continuation of the fourth section as it focuses on explanation regarding combination of words based on their meaning in tamil next is urubial this subsection focuses on word modifiers that are added to the end of a noun or pronounced to create a new meaning next is 
we are myangial. This subsection focuses on the combination of words that contain a vowel at the beginning and end with a vowel as well. Next is Pulli Pulli. Placement is one of the most distinguishing factor associated with characters in the Tamil language, often found in the Brahmi script. The Pulli is distinguished by its placement. The subsection focuses on the combination of words with a consonant upon consonant ending. Next is Kutri Alukara Punarial. The last subsection explores the words created by combining initial vowel phonetic upon the shortened u vowel ending. The second part of this is Soladdikaram. The second book of Tolkapiyam completely deals with the words and parts of speech in Tamil language. This book classifies Tamil words into four broad categories. One is Ayarchor or Tamil words in common uses, Thirichor or Tamil words used in literature, Vadachor or Tamil words that have been borrowed from Sanskrit and the Thisaichor or the Tamil words that have been borrowed from other languages. Each of these four books contains nine subsections that concentrate on the formation and usage of syntax, adjectives, nouns, verbs, suffix, prefix and adverbs in the Tamil language. These nine subsections are Kilaviyakkam deals with gender, number, person, etc. Beth Rumayal or deals with how case works in syntax or Vetru Maimayangyal or deals with case and their correlation with suffix. Vilimarabu deals with how vocative cases are formed in Tamil language. The Payarial or deals with nouns. Vinayal or deals with verbs. Ideal or deals with suffix and prefix formation in Tamil language. Uriyal or deals with nature of qualifiers with reference to the use of adjectives and adverbs. HRVL deals with miscellaneous ideas associated with syntax formation in Tamil. The third part of Tholakapiyam is Poruladikaram. Poruladikaram contains the most significant set of information in the Tholakapiyam when it comes to Tamil literature. Poruladikaram in totality speaks about the descriptive use of natural landscape with relation to human emotions in Sangam literature. The third book provides classifications of different landscapes, seasons and religious deities and speaks about different modes of life attributed to each of the combinations of landscapes and seasons. For uh, different phonemic deviations prevalent in Sangam poetry, uh, Poruladikaram contains nine subsections which are like Akathinayayal or deals with the life of couples, Purathinayayal or deals with the different aspects in the public life of people, Kalavial or literature where uh, secretive love is exposed through someone and how they expose it is uh, well described. Karpial or deals with the lives of, lives of couples in love. Porulial deals with how couples inform their families and friends about their relationship and how they react to this. Or Meipatial or deals with how feelings are expressed. Uh, Uvamayal deals with natural landscapes and metaphors related to them. And the Seyulial deals with grammar in Tamil poetry. Marabial deals with the chronology of Tamil. Now let us talk about the authorship or the uh, that as previously mentioned attributing the authorship of Tolkapiyam to a single author has been a controversy for centuries. However, vast amount of historical and linguistic evidence the authorship of the um, historical and linguistic evidence that the authorship of the Tolkapiyam has been attributed to a Tamil uh, Shangam poetry named Tolkapir. Though several, um, though several critics have stated that Tolkapir's name is derived from the text itself, there is no clear indication as to when Tolkapir existed. 
According to sources, Tolka Pier is believed to have been the disciple of Agathya or Agastya and was born in the Tamil month of uh, Chiti Rai around 865 BC. Tolka Pier is believed to have been born in the Andakodu village in uh, Vilanvakodu Taluk situated in modern day Kanyakumari district of Tamil Nadu. References point to this fact in his work Tolka Piam. There have been assumptions about why Tolka Piam was compiled in the first place. Sources within the state believed that Tolka Pier was asked to compile the great text on Tamil grammar after Agathir, a text on Tamil grammar composed by his guru Agathir, disappeared. After the Tolka Piam, another text on Tamil grammar, grammar uh, Nanul had been composed by uh, Favannathi Munivar around the 13th century, 13th century AD, and it serves as a commentary on older works like Tolkapiam itself. Religion and Tolkapiam. Tolkapiam, along with other ancient Tamil texts like Patu Patu or the Ten Songs and Ettu Tokai or Eight Anthologies, shed light on the early religious beliefs of Tamil people from the, from the bygone era. From ancient times to the modern day Tamil Nadu, Murugan is a chief de a deity in the Hindu spectrum. Murugan or, or Kartik, as he is known in other Indian cultures, is the son of Lord Shiva. He is described and illustrated as one of the most beautiful gods seated on a blue peacock and every young, ever uh, resplendent figure of divinity among the Tamil people. In the, in the third um, book of Tolka Piyam, we are introduced to the idea of Sangam landscapes and how they can be related to the descriptions in the poems. These attributions help us understand which Hindu deities were worshipped during the Sangam period. These thinas are attributed to a specific religious figure as well as the season and the flora fauna associated with it. Murugan was considered as the patron deity of the, the Kurinchi Thinai situated in the Blue Mountains or Nilgiris. Kurinchi, the Thinai, is named so after a flower of the same name which is believed to bloom only in the mist engulfed greenery of the Nilgiris. Kurinchi is a Thinai which deals with the meeting and union of two lovers. The Tolkapiam states that the next Thinai, Mullai or forest have Lord Vishnu or Tirumal as the patron deity. Mullai is a Thinai where poems glorify lovers, spat and their eventual reunion. The other patron deities for the other three Thinais include Goddess Durga or Kotravai, for Palai or Westland Desert showcasing lovers, uh, separation and hero's journey. Through a dangerous statue, Lord Indra or Vendan for Murutham or agricultural lowlands, where lovers elope to hide their love away from others. Lord Varuna or Kadalan for Nathal or Sea Coast, where lovers experience the longest separation from each other. Below is a table which tabulates these attributions more closely, what you can see in, in your uh, PPT. Now let us talk about the Tolka Piam and its contribution to the Indian literary tradition. Not only uh, did the Tolka Piam throw light on the culture and life of people in Tamil Nadu from the ancient age, but also contributed to the Indian linguistic study as we know it today. Without the Tolkapiam, a major part of India's linguistic history would have been void. As a country which has been constantly overshadowed by post-colonial sentiments, Tolkapiam towers as a text which showcases Indian literary brilliance. As a text written in pre-Christian era, Tolkapiam exhibits a linguistic and literary precision that is much beyond its time. Beginning beginning from the deconstruction of constants, uh, constants, vowel, consonants, vowels, and use of syntax. Tolkapiam is the first text of grammar, steeped completely in Indian linguistic understandings 
It is one of the first books in the world to have decoded literary tools with such precision. Given the time period, it is a part of Tolkapiam, also gave shape to Indian poetic traditions for centuries to come. The relation to Sangam literature holds true not just for works from the ancient age but also today. The intricacies with which each of these uh, Thinais attribute their relation to a season, a religious deity and flora or fauna is the earliest known example of literary metaphors in Tamil literature. Even today, the attributions given to each of these Thinai remain valid in modern-day Indian theatre or films. Separation between lovers is often showcased through deserts in celluloid. Union of lovers is shown is a beautiful landscape, mostly having mountains, have a backdrop, and lastly, sea coast is used to depict Viraha Gatha or long periods of separation between lovers. Thus showing the relevance of how Tolkapiam shaped the landscapes of Indian poetic imagination for centuries that followed. Now, let us conclude our discussion. Tolkapiam shaped up the history of poetic tradition in India for centuries to come. As a country, constantly struggling with the colonial ideas instilled in our history, Tolkapiam as a pre-colonial text outshines the binding shackles of literary conflicts. It exhibits the rich and vibrant culture existing in ancient India and the deep-rooted understanding of grammaticism. Tolkapiam helped in shaping the face of Indian poetic thought for centuries that followed by detailing factors that contributed to the existence of Indian poetry as we know it today. The residual reflections of the intricacies within Sangam poetry can still be seen in contemporary Indian poetry where characters follow similar modes of expression as seen within Sangam literature, irrespective of various controversies which surround its dating and authorship, the Tolfa Kirpiam continues to remain an anchoring precursor in the history of Indian literary tradition. Thank you.